Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. Today's Monday. Bitcoin was up today. Miners, not so much. So we'll take a look at what's going on there with the miners, the Bitcoin. And then we have a couple of stories. We have TerraWolf reporting, obviously paying down the debt some more, which is great news. And we got Iron also providing us with the update that their AI customer has updated or extended their contract for another four months. We'll take a look at that as well. And then we'll get into the actual break even numbers based on the latest quarterly results that we have from the miners. And it is pretty interesting. We'll take a look at that at the end of the video and we'll call it a day. Okay, so it should be pretty easy here. Also, we're only about 10 days away from the having event, which is great news, I think. Um, I think right now, the reason miners are coming down while Bitcoin is going up is because of the having event. But we'll get into that here. As always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research and invest in finding coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe, helps me out tremendously. And then any corrections will be posted to Discord, YouTube, and Twitter as well. Okay, so let's get into uh, the miners here. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm a little tired today. Did some yard work outside, and uh, I'm just tired. Uh, but we'll get through this. Hopefully, I have enough energy to get through it all. Uh, but here's what we got. Obviously, Bitcoin was up today, which was a nice day. It was up approximately 3.27%. It was up much higher than that. I think it broke above, let's see, the high was, yeah, broke above 72,777. It wasn't obviously our new all-time high here, but we got close to the previous high that we had. And the miners, on the other hand, started out the day in the green, right? Pre-market, they were in the green. We had some miners that were up like 8, 10, 11% and higher than that, even a little bit. But then as the day, as the morning kind of wore on, they started coming back down in price. So uh, we've seen this before where Bitcoin's going up, miners are going down. And like I've said before, I think this is just mainly because of the having event coming up here. When you look at it, obviously the cost of Bitcoin mining is going to go up basically doubled, right? Or you could look at it that the revenue is going to get cut in half also. Um, so I think that's obviously having a big impact on the miners right now. Past the halving event, we may see another four to eight weeks or something like that where things just are kind of flat or maybe even going down a little bit more some. And then after that, as long as Bitcoin continues to go up potentially, but it could also be where Bitcoin goes up now and the miners also follow suit. Uh, but I think we would have to get above probably like 75, 80,000 or something like that for the miners to really start uh, tracking more towards Bitcoin is. Um, but we'll see, right? We still have a long ways to go. I think we're still very early in the stage. So I'm not too worried about it right now. And looking at the miners, obviously, you guys are keeping track of them. So I'm not going to go through them. But you can see, obviously, we had obviously a more of a red day here. We had a couple that were in the green. We had Hut in the green, DMG, Cypher, Bitdeer, Argo, and Annie. We're in the green today and everybody else was kind of down on the day <laughs> even though they started out in the green in the morning they ended up in the green anyways at the end of the day here so uh i look at these kind of days as buying opportunities i didn't buy today um i didn't have the chance to do it but i will possibly buy some more tomorrow uh i want to buy buy some more obviously of bid farms and iron and uh we'll talk about that tomorrow if i do buy those okay but that's kind of where we're at right now uh, and let's take a look at the stories that we do have here, which is going to be the first one is going to be on uh, Iron. So pull size, up size, and extends an AI cloud service contract for them. I think this is good news, but I'm also a little weary about this. And I'll give you guys my thoughts on this as, as why. Right. So Iron is going into the AI space a little bit as well. Right. So, and they've had a customer at pull side. And the agreement here has been basically upsized now from 248 to 504 NVIDIA H100 GPUs following successful initial deployment and an additional four months term commencing mid-April 2024 and an extension option for a further two months uh, at the customer's election. <clears throat> Excuse me. So my concern here is uh, what if Pulseside finishes their, um, you know, their large language model or something like that in that time frame, and they don't need the services anymore. So that's my only concern really there is with them getting to 504 H100 GPUs, that's gonna give them more po uh, processing power. They could potentially do whatever they wanna do as far as see what the language models come back with and the AI, other things, whatever they're doing there. Um, maybe they can finish their task in that time frame, And that potentially leaves Iron in a spot where they expended the capital to build out to 504 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. And then and then at potentially after that time frame, they don't have a customer for those servers, right? That's my only concern here. And I don't have obviously the insides of what's going on there or what the uh, confidence level is based on pull side. 
and anything else like that. But that's just kind of looking on as an outsider looking in, that would be one of my concerns there is, you know, can the customer get what they need within that time frame and then be done with it? And then you're basically on the hook for those uh, GPUs basically, and you're looking for another customer to potentially be able to use those. Um, so that's the only concern there. I wish they would have had maybe a longer contract on there. I still like Iron, but I like them because of their Bitcoin mining operations. Um, and obviously this is just another segment of their business, but we'll have to see how this all works out, right? So that's kind of what we have here. So additionally, four months term commencing mid-April 2024, an extension option to further for a further two months at the customer's election, like they stated. Uh, so like I said, um, we'll have to see how this works out, all right? But like I've said, the Bitcoin mining farms and or Bitcoin mining uh, operations and things like that uh, is what got me interested in Iron. And that's what still has me interested in Iron as far as going forward. I think this is where, at least in the next 12 to maybe 16, 18 months or something like that, where the huge upside potential is for that. Whereas uh, an AI side of business is more of a, potentially if they can get a customer in for a longer period of time, it's more even business as far as uh, revenue is concerned, right? It's not, not as many ups and downs as we've seen with Bitcoin, okay? Um, but that's just kind of my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think of it, okay? And then next we have here is Terrible. They announced uh, here. Terrible finances continued industry leading cash production and 30 million debt repayment. If you guys didn't have a chance to catch the conversation that we had with uh, Patrick from Terrible, their CFO, on Sunday with the, the BTC mining stock guy uh, on Twitter spaces, he went on for, I think, for about an hour answering questions or something, about right around that time. But it was a great conversation with him. We had uh, Penny Ether on there as well, obviously, asking a lot of questions. And while he was asking great questions, we didn't see any need to interrupt him. Uh, but I've asked some questions in there as well. If you guys have a chance to listen to it, it was only, I think, an hour and a half long conversation there. And it's on um, the BTC Mining Stock Guys uh, Twitter profile. I believe he has a link there on it. You guys can catch that if you want. But here's what we announced, uh, what they announced. And Patrick said that they were going to be announcing something this week, and they did. So this is great here. So Terrell for today announced it has repaid an additional 30.1 million of its term loan, thereby reducing the debt balance to 75.9 million. Right, so that's great to see that it's uh, below 100 million right now. That's below, well, it's not below 75 million, but we're close there. And they have that until the end of this year, I think is when they have to repay it in December, I believe. So they've done great strides here in repaying that uh, debt here. And that was one of my biggest concerns here with them going forward is their debt. How will they be able to repay that, right? Originally, we were thinking that Bitcoin was going to go down to, well, not go down to, but be at like maybe 45, 50,000 max at the halving event, but Bitcoin's at 71,000, almost 72,000 right now. That is definitely adding a lot more revenue to them that, that we haven't seen or we didn't think we would have, you know, a couple months back, right? Um, so this is obviously good for them. And here's the manage management commentary. Patrick Fleury, Chief Financial Officer, remarked, this 30 million uh, payment follows our repayment of approximately 40 million over the past six months. And there is more to come. So that's good news, right? They're obviously going to be trying to pay that down. Uh, revenues obviously will um, be halved after the having event in about 10 days or so when that happens. But with them being still potentially profitable, even at, uh, I think they stated in here, uh, which they do here. Fleury also stated, as today's approximate 70,000 Bitcoin price, we expect our industry leading economics resulting in a fully loaded cost of mine of Bitcoin of just 37,000 post having. And I think they're taking into account here. Um, possibly some reduction in the network hash rate. And obviously some miners unplugging because they're not profitable at that point, right? Some of the older miners, I think that's kind of what they're going by here right now. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, post having to allow for continued rapid debt extinguishment. All of the inputs used to determine our cost to mine a Bitcoin can be found on our recently updated cost to mine calculator on our website. As previously indicated, once we've settled our ascending debt, we plan to allocate profits towards organic growth potential dividends or share buybacks to benefit our shareholders. Um, I think the likelihood of them doing dividends or share buybacks are maybe 5 to 10%. That's kind of my thoughts on it. And the reason I say that is because I believe the network hash rate is going to be growing uh, quite fast here in the next 12 months or so. Uh, we may have a little low here at uh, when we have the having event, we may dip a little bit. But after that, I believe it's going to continue to go up. And the reason I say that is because 
The latest generation miners, you only need 5,000 of those miners to get one exahash. Whereas compared to, I'm just going back to nine, uh, 2017, you, need, you needed like 72,000 of the um, S9 miners from Bitmain, which were 13.3 terahash miners at that time to get to one exahash, right? So the economies of scale, um, 5,000 compared to 72,000, that's a huge difference there. That's why I think the network hash is gonna go potentially uh, grow pretty well here this year. I'm thinking maybe around 800 to 900 uh, exahash by the end of the year. But if that happens, I think they're gonna obviously need to uh, grow more because if you're not growing at that point, you're going to need, uh, well, if you're not growing at that point, you're going to be uh, earning less potentially, unless Bitcoin continues to go up much higher, right? So that's the only saving grace there is if Bitcoin continues to grow up higher and you're at certain exahash and you're not growing, that will definitely save you and help you. But if Bitcoin is flat at any point in, in time, uh, which we don't know if it's going to be, right? Normally in bull runs, we see a nice parabolic rise in Bitcoin. But if that doesn't happen, this would obviously be a potential where they may look to uh, possibly getting newer miners, growing their hash rate, replacing some of the older miners and things like that, uh, just to make it even more profitable for them to go forward. But nonetheless, I think this is great news. Getting down to 75.9 million here in uh, left debt left over is great news. And we'll look at some of the numbers here that we have on the miners with the break-evens after the heading event. And they are possibly, well, I'll just say it, they are one of the ones that I actually calculated to be at a break-even price uh, after the heading event. Bitcoin stays at 70,000 and network hash rate stays at around 600 uh, exa hash right now. Okay. But that is it. So this is good news, them paying their debt down. One big thing I would like to see, obviously, from them is continued growth going forward, right? Uh, I'd like to see them to get maybe at least a 20 exa hash by, well, I don't know if they can do it this year, but maybe next year or something like that. I think that would be an awesome goal for them. Um, we do have a lot of miners that are getting to 20 exa hash this year. We got BitFarms, Iron uh, as well. And then we have other miners like CleanSpark, Marathon, and Riot getting to above 30 exahash potentially by the end of this year as well. So if they want to stay in like the top seven, I guess you could say, they need to get close to that number there uh, going forward. Okay. But that's it on Wolf here. Let's take a look at the numbers that I have for break evens here. And I'll kind of explain this stuff to you guys as best I can. And we'll go through each of the, I guess, uh, columns here. And this is all based on the numbers that we have for Q4 results, which end in December 31st. Some of these results are based on Q1 results or Q3 results, depending on the company, right? So there is some variation there. Uh, companies that report Q4 results will sometimes put in a bunch of uh, additional things into their results. Um, bonuses, uh, share-based compensation in there as well, and other things. So. Well, I'll try to explain this stuff to you guys as best I can, and we'll go through each column, and then we'll look at the results here. Uh, a couple of things to note here for Q. So I'm looking at basically Q4 number numbers for these guys. Uh, Terra Wolf is BTC mined is calculated for self mining. Uh, at that point, they were not reporting or segregating the numbers for the self mining and the joint venture that they were a part of or still are a part of. Um, so I was calculating that based on what I could figure out. Um, so it might not be as accurate, right? Going forward, I think we'll have much better numbers because Patrick has been kind enough to actually provide us with a segregated uh, numbers for Bitcoin self-mining and JV stuff. So, and I've talked to him be before about this as well, and he was kind enough to say, yeah, that kind of actually makes sense. Also here, we don't have HUT8 in here as well in Argo. They're omitted right now because HUT8 provided their numbers uh, for the last six months of the year of 2023, which were basically six months of uh, USBTC numbers, and then they included one month of only uh, HUT8 numbers, right? And all the numbers that I had prior to that uh, merger were HUT8 numbers. So I have really bad data as far as HUT8 is concerned right now, and I'm hoping that improves over time, which I, it's going to improve over time as we get more data from HUT8 being a merged company. Uh, but right now I'm uh, omitting those because I just don't pull, I don't trust the data, at least not right now. Okay. All right. So we got through that uh, clarifications things. So here on the quarterly expenses, the first column that we look at, I'm pulling the numbers from the Q4 results or for some of the miners. Basically I'm pulling in the results for the December 31st ending results for all the miners, right? Whether it's their Q4, Q1 or Q3, whatever it might be. 
And I'm looking at like, um, you know, let's take a look at bit deer here for instance here. We're looking at self-mining percentage of revenue. So I'm, for some of these guys that have other business segments, uh, like bit deer, uh, you got Riot in there as well. I believe, uh, who else? Uh, they might have different business things. Guys, uh, other companies that have hosting or something like that, I'm trying to figure out what is their actual expense for self-mining, which is not easy. Um, so I'm using a calculation, basically a percentage of what the revenue was and what the revenue was for self-mining, and that's kind of what I'm using there, right? So be mindful of that as well. It's not perfect, but it's. I hope, I hope it's close enough, okay? So that's what we're kind of looking in there. And also we have some miners that report their self uh, self sales and general administrative compensation or compensation wow i'm tired uh what is it it's uh, sgna right some of them report in there as well as their share based compensation in it and some actually segregated out into another line item basically on the reports um, so for this one here i included all of the sales and general administrative compensation and share based compensation so if they broke it out i included that as well just to make everything even here as much as i could and then down the road here, down the columns down further, I actually include or subtract the share based compensation out of the figures to take a look at those numbers as well. So that way we can kind of see side by side how things look, okay? And then uh, some of the miners that report in Canadian, um, um, basically converting that over into USD. So that's this column here, energy expense. I'm looking at what did they report as far as their operational expenses are for that ending quarter, right? And that's for all these guys here. So that should be all pretty the same. Uh, bit your same thing. I'm looking at a percentage of that potentially for their self mining, right? Uh, same thing for Riot, I believe. Here, where's Riot? Riot is right here. Riot, uh, let me see here. I want to make sure I can get this right. Mining. Okay, so they actually broke it down in mining. So unless they, unless they don't, don't break it down, I'll actually use the percentages here. Like here I have self-mining revenue, right? 76.14% of the revenue side of things. And then if they don't break it down for individual business segments, I'll use the uh, percentage here, okay? Hope that makes sense. Uh, so then we look at the monthly energy expenses here, right? We just take that and divide that by three, basically, in the three months in the, in the quarter. Same thing for the monthly expenses. Uh, we look at, I mean, this doesn't really affect anything. I was just looking at to see what their BTC mind average was for the quarter. Uh, cost of energy per BTC, right? Looking at those kind of numbers, seeing where things stack up on that side of things. And then we're looking at reported quarter uptime percentage. So I'm looking at the uh, December, November, and October numbers for them. And what was their uptime average at that point? And then I'm also looking at the last three quarters, right? Because we do have some swings in there, obviously. Uh, so I wanted to kind of pull all that data in and see what was their average more or less, right? They could have a month or two that were really bad, but prior to that, they were operating really well. So I wanted to kind of average it out a little bit as best I could for everybody here. Uh, obviously the miners are operating really well. They're not going to, uh, lose anything to this. Uh, it's just the miners that are having issues or something like that. It will help them out a little bit, I think, uh, based on these numbers, right? Because things can change obviously on a dime here. Quarter after or quarter hash rate average here, this column, this looks at their basically average for the quarter here. And then I'm just multiplying it times the percentage uptime here, basically reported quarter uptime. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm calculating the actual kilowatts per petahash cost, right? And this one, this column here having 2024, this is kind of where they, I believe they're going to be based on the latest numbers that we have here, what they reported for March as far as their hash rate is concerned right now. And then we're multiplying it times the last three quarters of uptime to get an average more or less where they could possibly be, okay? Uh, and then what their electrical cost could be based on that, right? So we're just taking that, multiplying it times the, whatever the figure was here, times the petahash at the end of March 1st, or at the end of March, sorry, and getting the electrical cost potentially based on that. So it's, it's average, right? It's not, an exact cost, but it's based on the averages that they had in the Q4 numbers. Okay. Then uh, I need to fix this. We need to go back down to 70,000, 71,000. Let's do that on um, Bitcoin. So this is Bitcoin price. Wow. Bitcoin price here. And then I was learning some numbers here earlier on. And the actual now hash rate here is at 600 exahash right now. Two, three. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at. 
So this is the numbers here as far as that we're looking at right now. These are the numbers for the break even with uh, share based compensation for the miners. Okay. So we got bit deer coming in at 72,000. Oh, don't want to do that. Uh, let me see. So let me do this going uh, ascending here. Okay. So now we got actually them going ascending, meaning from lowest to highest numbers. Based on the cost they had reported for operations, which are basically all cash expenses, which also in, will include uh, um, interest expenses in there as well, right? I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, right now, CleanSpark looks like based with share based compensation, they would be profitable at 62,000 roughly, right? You got Terrell uh, profitable at 63.9 thousand. And I said, I spoke about this in, um, in the Twitter spaces on Saturday when I was speaking with Patrick. I asked him the question, uh, does he think that he's going to be profitable um, on a cash basis? after the having right now and he said yes and that's kind of coincides with my numbers because i just wanted to verify that i was seeing the same things that he was seeing uh, but we're seeing the same things here so they're at about sixty-four thousand, right uh with share based compensation being added in there as well dmg at seventy thousand. you got bit deer at seventy two thousand. then you got core at 76 digihost at 78 marathon at 83 iris at uh, 84 bit farms at 85 Hive at 90, Stronghold at 90, uh, Riot at 90 as well, Cypher at 92, Bit Digital at 137, Sphere 3D at 144, and Mawson at 147 there. Um, so that's kind of the way things have stacked up here. And some of you guys might be asking, well, why is Marathon so high, right? Marathon is high because they have, uh, as far as expenses are concerned, they and their uptime hasn't been that great. Uh, I mean, you can see there, I'm giving them 75% uptime right now, but their uptime over the last couple months has been actually like at 60% or something like that, right? So I'm actually giving them a benefit of the doubt here that they get their things resolved here a little bit going forward, which would obviously get them to 83,000 uh, 83, for Bitcoin. But the big thing here is for them is the cost here. If you look at their quarterly expenses, it was 39.25 million here i think that is possibly the highest cost that we've seen here uh and this is just for sgna expenses things like that this is not looking into operations operations energy cost was 75 million here right um so once they obviously take over the facilities that they have been buying and getting their own talent in there that should decrease their operational costs as well which obviously is energy costs and operational costs things like that that will decrease over time i believe in the next couple of quarters and then if they can fix their uptime as well, their numbers will fall uh, as far as what is their break-even number, right? But right now, their costs are just really high. Uh, and then if you look at also, who else do we want to look at that was kind of a surprise here? I think uh, Riot. Where's Riot? Riot, right? Riot also pretty high uh, quarterly expenses with uh, general, with well, SG&A and um, share-based compensation in there, added, being added in there as well, right? And then energy costs, and then their uptime hasn't been also that great. Their uptime in the last uh, three quarters was about 0.69% per, uh, roughly, right? So with them getting to the course kind of facility, getting those operations up and running uh, and possibly having more uptime, that's going to definitely be much more beneficial to them going forward. And that should lower their cost as well, right? It's also like a pretty much with the miners here, it's like a game of scale. The more scale you can get for the same amount of overhead costs, I guess you could say, the better you're going to be in the long run, right? So that's obviously important to take a look at here. And then uh, also like Mawson, I've talked about Mawson before, where I think they're definitely going to be in potential, potential trouble uh, if Bitcoin isn't above a certain price. And I mean, you can see here quarterly expenses, 4.8 million, energy expense, 5.5 million based on the things that I've calculated and going over here. Let me see, we went a little too far. Total expenses, revenue, yep. 147,000 for Bitcoin for them to break even on that point, okay? So that's looking with all the cash expenses and share-based compensation. Let's take a look at if we take out share-based uh, compensation out of those numbers here and see how things stack up at that point. So I went through all the um, quarterly results and I went through some of the uh, annual results and subtract, tried to figure out what the actual expense was for Q4 numbers for these guys. And these are the figures that I was able to figure out here, which are in this column here, right? And then we go over here to total expense minus SBC. So basically what we're doing here is we're just taking total expenses and we're um, 
taking the quarterly results or the quarterly uh, share-based compensation, dividing by three, right? Uh, and subtracting that from the total expense here for the month. And that's where we're getting the number here, right? So we're getting different numbers here, lower numbers. And then that gets us over to what is the break-even now? So if we look at the break-even after we take out the share-based compensation here, we can see here that BitDeer uh, is actually the number one here spot with 51.62, 51.6 million. But like I said, BitDeer is based on my calculation of what they um, self-mine compared to what the rest of the business segments are, right? And I don't know exactly how much compensation goes into each business segment for whatever reason and things like that. So that's kind of the way it's coming out right now at 51,000 per Bitcoin for them to break even. Clean Spark, uh, 53,000. Then we got Riot at 60,000. Core at 62,000. TerraWolf at 62,000 as well. We got DMG at 66,000. Cypher at 68. Mawson at 69, right? So that obviously looks a little better. So it looks like they had a, quite a bit of uh, share based compensation in that quarter which obviously if you can see here, 69,000 compared to the 144,000, that is a pretty huge difference there. And we can see here that they had uh, even, a, yeah, I mean, 470,000, but that obviously plays a lot into it if you divide it by three uh, and then do the numbers on it. So that definitely helps them out there. So that's uh, Moss in here. And then we got Iris at 72,000, Digihost at 73,000, Bitfarms at 79,000, Marathon at 80,000. Hive at 88,000, uh, Stronghold at 90,000, Bit Digital at 92,000, and we got Sphere 3D at 138,000 right there. Um, so it all depends. Obviously, I've said this probably for the past year, I think I've been saying this, that the miners going into the having event need to be as lean as possible uh, in order to survive the having event. Obviously, we were thinking Bitcoin's going to be at 45, maybe 50,000 come having event. We were not thinking that Bitcoin's going to be at 70,000. So uh, a lot of these guys here are really close to being profitable. And you can see the numbers, how they reflect here. Um, so we got with share-based compensation, would they be actually positive or negative uh, on the monthly side of things? And we can see that CleanSpark and TerraWolf were the only ones. I had another one in there as well, but I had, had the price of Bitcoin being down a little bit. Uh, I believe, let me see, or up a little bit on that one. Where I had th I, Originally, I think I had it three like that. But we got it to where it's actually two here recently. And then you can see here without uh, share-based compensation, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight miners that are basically able to be cash flow positive after the having event, right? Not including share-based compensation in that. Uh, so that looks a lot better here than what we've seen before. And then I wanted to take a look really quick as far as where the miners could be at the end of potentially this year. Um, but it's kind of tough because we don't know what they're going to, well, we kind of know what some of them are going to be growing to, but can they actually get to that? So it's kind of like, what if we get to a, uh, what if they grow their hash rate that they have ordered and things like that, that's on there by the maybe next year, right? Next year. So next 12 months, next 12 to 15 months. And let's say Bitcoin goes up to um, 200,000, network hash rate goes up to, let's just say 900 exa hash right there. Potentially, I think it's going to be probably higher if, at that point if Bitcoin's at 200,000. But let's just say that we are at 200,000 on Bitcoin at this point. And network hash rate is at, let's just say, 950 exahash, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. And then here's how things stack up at that point. So if the companies get to what they have already um, said that they're purchasing, right, in the next 12 to 15 months, this is how the revenue kind of sets up. And as long as their uptime is also the same as we're using the averages here for the uptime, um, this is how things would stack up. So you got, uh, let's do the no revenue numbers here from top to bottom. Uh, let's see here, descending. Okay. So at that point, we would have potentially CleanSpark uh, having the most revenue here per month, uh, 147 million here roughly in the... Well, Wow, is my numbers right? 147 million at that point? Wow. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. 147 million in revenue. That doesn't seem right, does it? Is that correct? All right. Future. Oh, uh, 50, yeah. Okay. 51 exa hash potentially. Yeah. Uh, they said their goal is to get to 50 exa hash by sometime next year. Uh, so if they can get to like 50, 51 extra hash, obviously that's going to be huge for them. We also know Riot wants to, and this is based on, so, okay. A little clarification here. 
the numbers here are what has been provided as being purchased, right? A lot of these miners also have options to buy more machines to get above that, but this is just basically what's been purchased. Uh, so this is kind of the caveat here. Uh, obviously, Riot has a lot more uh, hash rate that they can get to, right? I think they want to get to 40 some extra hash, potentially 50, and then 100 extra hash they have future plans for. But this is just based on what's been purchased right now or has been re or has been released to us, to the public, that they have purchased this amount. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going by here. Um, yeah, because I thought this was way off. I'm like, a 147 million, then you're looking at, what is that, about $2 billion in revenue potentially on a 12-month race rate. Um, so, yeah, so this is kind of what we're going with. Um, let's decrease that by a little bit for CleanSpark here because um, 50x hash by the end, probably by the end of next year, might be doable, but not by, like, the next 12 months or something like that. Uh, so let's decrease that by, I don't know, let's just do that by times 0.75. Let's see here how that looks. All right, 38. That seems a little bit more reasonable. Uh, so that gives them still 110 million here, roughly. And then you got bit for, or Riot at 80 million, roughly. Marathon at 67 million in um, revenue, right, after expenses. Oh, no, this would be before expenses. Uh, sorry, this would be before expenses. Uh, then you got Core at... 59 million, you got Bitfarms at 56 million, Iris at 52 million, and with them getting to 18 extra hash, but I think they want to get to like 20 extra hash, but that's based on their operational uptime as well, I believe. Let me see here. Uh, are we also looking at that uptime percentage? Yeah, we're looking at the uptime percentage as well on that. Okay, so Cypher would be at 42 million in month, Bitdeer would be 27, then you got Terrawolf at 21. Hive at 15, uh, Stronghold at 9, almost 10. The yeah, Stronghold, sorry, Hive was at 9, almost 10. Stronghold was at, no, sorry, wow. Bit Digital, my apologies. Bit Digital at 7.7 .7 million. DMG at 5.1 million. Sphere at 4.2. Mawson at 3.4. And you got Digihost at 3.3. Right, so that's why you see where the need to grow is. The scale side of things. If you can scale on in this Bitcoin mining business, you're going to be doing a lot better than potentially a lot of the other miners in this space because I think scale is the king here. If you can scale to 35, 30, 35, 40, 50 extra hash or something like that within the next two years, you're going to be doing really well. And as long as you can keep your costs for SGNA, other things like that, relatively in check, um, you're obviously going to be paying more for people, employees that are going to be operating the farms there. But that shouldn't be that much more compared to what you're paying now um, and that's kind of where your growth is going to be really be as far as revenue is concerned and potentially giving you a much bigger uh, bigger market cap as well right so let me know what you guys think of this this is obviously just calculations based on what we've had reported for q4 at the end of december 31st um, and what i could find out on all these miners here based on what their operations were on average for you know what is their uptime for the last three quarters what was their average hash rate for that month or for that quarter? What was their average price basically uh, for mining that, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're doing all that stuff to try and figure it out. Uh, uh, is it going to be 100% exact? No. All right. But this is just another tool that we can use to see where the miners could possibly be come having event if it happened right now. But we're not too far away. We're 10 days away. Bitcoin's at 71,000 right now. So I think we're pretty close to where things are looking at right now. Um, and things can obviously change with uptime and everything else going forward. Right? especially for Marathon, Riot, that have been underperforming with, with their operations. Going forward, if they get those resolved, they could definitely be... Well, let's take a look at the numbers here. Let's see if they... Let's go back here. If we go back here to Marathon and their uptime, let's just say their uptime goes back up to being a lot better here. Uh, let's see here. Last three quarters. So 75%. Let's get them to... Let's say they're up to 0.95%. Right? At that point, they are making 85, and let's say that they get to 50 extra hash, right? They're supposed to get to 50 extra hash. They have the miners from new, um, what is that uh, company called? Jeez, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, but the miners that they are potentially working, not the miner, uh, Adar, Adaraline? Can't remember the name, but you guys know what I mean. Aradine, there we go, Aradine. Right. At that point, if they get to 50 extra hash, potentially in the next year, year and a half or something like that, you're looking at 142 million with Bitcoin being at 200,000 and now we're hash rated at 950 extra hash, right? So that's just something for you guys to take a look at how that all impacts things.
going forward. Um, so, you know, everything is at play here right now. This is not set in stone that this is where it's going to be. This is just a snapshot in time right now. Um, and I hope you guys understand that and right, and use it just for that that kind of advice or information side of things. But that is it. So I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, obviously hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. And then my only sales pitch to you guys, as always, is Patreon. Um, love you guys all there. You guys are helping me out tremendously. Um, and there's a lot of great people on Patreon. That's $8 a month right now. And the description is in the link. The link is in the description. Oh, I'm tired. Uh, that's still $8 a month. You might be able, to be able to find spots that are $5 and $4 a month. And I think that's it. So we'll see what happens later on this week. We still have a couple miners that need to report. I, we'll see if they report this week. If they do, that's great. If not, we'll look at other metrics as well as far as uh, where could the stock price be, right? We'll take a look at some numbers based on what we're seeing here in these spreadsheets and see where they could possibly be in the next, you know, maybe six, 12 months, depending on where Bitcoin goes, network hash rate, where that goes, based on what their targets are for the end of the year. Maybe some of you will do it by the targets at the end of the year, right? So whatever their targets are to get to the end of the year, We'll use those numbers. We'll see where maybe Bitcoin can be at that point along with network hash rate. And we'll see what kind of revenue they can generate. And as far as maybe try to figure out as how many shares are out, things like that. So we'll do that later on this week as well. Okay. But that's it here. I'm rambling on and I do appreciate you guys coming in. Let me know if you guys have any questions on this. A um, lot of numbers, a lot of data as always. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next one.